three on the last play, so it's second and 13. Lindsley, here comes the blitz. They didn't get there, but it's intercepted. Picked up at the 10-yard line, Steve Water. They were throwing for the tight end, Trevor Malini, but Water gets his third interception of the season. Well, the turnovers have really hurt BYU this year. Lindsley throws a lot of interceptions. He only has 12 touchdowns. He has 16 picks already this year. He's going to get hurried. This is the case. It's not a sack, but Hicks is going to put so much pressure on him. He makes a mistake. Doesn't set his feet. Puts it up. And really, it's an easy interception right here. That's what San Diego State needs to do. They need to put pressure on Lindsley and make him force the ball. Whether to get a sack or not really isn't that important. But they're bringing up the middle and with their backers. It came with a safety blitz. They did not pick it up, and he delivered a big hit on it. Lindsley has been criticized for putting the ball up for grabs when you get that kind of heat. It makes it tough. And here's what Brigham Young has been able to do, or San Diego State, rather, in the turnover department. Lately, they have been very tough, and Brigham Young has popped it up an awful lot. Santis gets the ball back to his deep in his own territory. And they've got the screen out there to Gilmore. And Gilmore gets it up to the 19-yard line. Good job by the senior Corey Gilmore. Well, they put a lot of heat on Santa's last series. One way to get rid of that heat, go outside to a screen, get your quarterback a little confidence, your offense, offensive line a little confidence, and that's a nice call right there. I'm sure Santa's wanted to see that first completion. Uh, the first couple of passes he threw were uh, a little of the nervous variety. Uh, they did not have a good game against the last one. Game six on that last play, so it's second and four. Gilmore again lost his balance only got to the 20-yard line, maybe gained a half a yard and no more. Sean Knight, 77, was on the bottom of the pile. Knight's going to be in on a lot of tackles, as is Jason Buck. Are we talking about the players here? There's some big guys. Well, Sean Knight goes 6'6", 285, and the guy blocking him, Dave DeRocher, is 6'7", 285. They call this uh, minor league football. Some people yeah. forget it. They can play with anybody. So Jason Buck can sure play with anybody. How much do you think you made, what, $2, $3 million today? <laughs> that did definitely help us negotiate. Third and three. Sanders wants to throw for it. Over the middle, and it's complete to Blanchard. Blanchard at the 35 for a first down. Rodney Thomas, the cornerback, made the tackle, but he couldn't stop the 16-yard gain. Very well. Awal will clear on this place, right in the middle of your screen. He's the tight end. It's his job to get, take the coverage to the sideline. Now they want to throw the ball across the middle. And Brett Blanchard, Brett Blanchard will come into your picture right now. Perfect throw. They executed. They took the linebackers across the field. Nice throw. First down, San Diego State at the 36. They'll go with Gilmore. Not a lot there. We're probably not going to see a lot from uh, San Diego State's rushing game. They're averaging less than 100 yards a game themselves. And Brigham Young is number seven in the country against the Russians, only giving up 90 yards. And you asked this question in the last game, Pat. If if you don't run that well and the other team stops to run, how come you still run? I don't know. I think it's something in the coach's contract that they have to <laughs> run a certain number of balls up the middle. I don't know. Keep people honest. I believe in throwing it as often as you can. Take the opening, whatever they give you. I'd like to run a lot of draws past Jason Buck. I'd hate to be standing back in the pocket and let him just come after him. Second eight, here comes the blitz. Always sending one of the linebackers to take the And it's going to be incomplete to Gilmore. And a good defensive job out there. And the outside linebacker, Richard Hobbs, was right with him. Well, we've been talking about Jason Buck a lot. When a guy's an Allen Trophy winner, you can't talk too much. He's going to put a lot of pressure on him right here. Man-to-man -man blocking. That's an awful tough job. He's just so strong. Again, you don't have a sack here, but he made a bad throw. And that was a quick throw, too. It was a short pattern. Santos wasn't back there all day. Buck got there in a hurry. They have a publicity gimmick they use for them. They put out an oversized dollar bill and under his picture, it's great. It says, he were of the sack of third and eight. Santos on the half roll. Here comes Buck. Missed him that time on Lowe's, and it's incomplete. Off the fingertips of Gilbreth and downfield was Shane Shumway on the coverage. And there you see Denny Stoltz asking Santos what happened on the last play. Tell you what happened. <laughs> yeah, 270 pounds. Just Jason Buck after him. Buck says when the ball snapped, I'm an animal. 
Savage just said, hey, man, I'm running for my life. I threw it across my body. It should have been a sack. You should be happy I got rid of it. <laughs> Ross to punt. O'Brien is deep. Better kick this time. Not a lot of height, but he got some distance on it. O'Brien from inside. Oh, he got a seat. A flag is down as he got to the 37-yard line. The flag is back around the 25-yard line. Nice return. 18 yards by sophomore Mike O'Brien. But we'll check the penalty for you. Really one of the big thrills of going to a football game or watching on a television now is when you have a nice return and there isn't a penalty. It seems like every isn't single it? play. And it's a clip. You just wonder if they can do anything with the rule to make it better. Now, obviously, they put the rule in to protect people, and nobody wants to change that, but uh, you'd like to see some of those more exciting plays. And they will mark it off against the Cougars of Brigham Young. We'll check it out when we come back. There's a timeout with 8.37 to go in a scoreless first quarter. Yeah. 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 All, right. All night, if you will, because we've got the Coca-Cola Bowl coming up live from Tokyo, Japan. Stanford against Arizona. That's 11 o'clock Eastern, 8 o'clock Pacific, following our game here in San Diego between the Aztecs and Brigham Young. Brigham Young with a little worse field position than the first time they had the ball in San Diego State Territory. This time they're back at the 14 after the clipping penalty on the punt. Only a single running back in the backfield, and that's Hamula. Got some room to run across the 22 to the 23 yard line. Lyndon Early came up from the corner to make a comment or to make the tackle. Let's get for a comment. Let's go down to the sideline and Tim Brando. Tim. What you just saw, Mike, is the key to this BYU offense. If Amuli gets some yardage, then that makes life easy, uh, easier on Lindsley. You might recall they lost three yards in the last series. That made it a second and 13. They knew the blitz was coming, still couldn't stop it. And that was the reason for the interception. And that is always the problem with Lindsley. They'd rather have him throw the short routes. When they put him in a heat and he has to throw downfield, that's where they've been prone to having some mistakes and they got the first down on the first run by Hamuli this time and that's exactly what Lavelle Edwards wants and needs. Of course Tim coaches would uh, just love to run their full back about uh, 45 times a game. Well last week you know like they ran the ball 77 times in one game. I mean for BYU that would be like two months any other year. Yeah people think they're watching the wrong team. Ran 450 plus yards last week against Utah. But if you can run it is so much safer than throwing the ball. It's not nearly as much fun to watch, but uh, Lavelle Edwards' job is to win as a coach. And now the officials all gathered around the 25-yard line in the football to talk uh, talk this over. I think what it uh, one thing it may be is if that... Uh, I don't want to speculate. I thought maybe it was on the clipping penalty on the punt that it was a post-possession foul, and it might have been first and 25 instead of first and 10, but... I love when you speculate, though. Well, you said you weren't going to do it, but yeah, you right ahead. I can't it. resist, and I haven't been right yet this year, so I thought I'd give it a shot. Going over to talk to uh, both sidelines. Uh, maybe he's going for a hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is rather disconcerting. You're sitting here. We really don't know what's happening here. Uh, I know he's not calling us for a replay. No, no he's got a phone call. We don't have the instant replay system, so it's not that. Maybe they're uh, maybe they're checking that punt down at the one yard line from Thursday night. <laughs> yeah, we hope we don't see that one again. They have now added 30 seconds back on the stadium clock. Beautiful scoreboard here at Jack Murphy San Diego Stadium. And the, apparently the problem is the clock itself. 30 seconds. Oh, we had that game earlier in the year. What, LSU game? It took, uh, like, 15 minutes to get the clock straightened out. Remember yeah. that? We ran out of material fast. <laughs> yeah, in about 30 seconds. Only had 14.30 left. The scoreboard clock showing now 8.20 and running in a scoreless first quarter. There are the numbers on Lindsley. As you see, 16 interceptions. This is his first year of play, though. As a senior. Levy Asseni, 
He just sliced through there on what looked like it was going to be a big, big play and brought him down. That's the seventh time this year he made a tackle in the opposing backfield. A lot of people feel that Asini is the best defensive lineman to ever play at San Diego State. And I realize most of the publicity of the school has been for receivers and quarterbacks, but that kid can run. 7.39 left, first quarter, a gain of a one on the last play, so it's second and nine. And they'll keep it on the ground, they move it. Didn't get a lot of it, once again, Asini got a piece of it, and then Richard Brown, number 50, was in there to help finish him off. This is not uh, Lavelle Edwards' standard offense, Pat. This is not the kind of thing we have uh, come to see on second and nine. Usually second and one is a passing bit. Well, they didn't like Steve Lindsley throwing that interception early. I'm sure, I'm sure that they're trying to settle him down here and go to high risk of pass. But they don't want to wait for third down. Up to third and six. And you can bet San Diego State is going to be coming after him on this one. No blitz, just a four-man rush, and he has time. And this fires trying for Parker. Early was out there on the coverage, but he missed that one badly. About well, the same route as they ran earlier. The difference is they ran it on third down, sure passing situation, better coverage. Earlier they ran it on first down, and Parker was a wide open on the play. I think they really have to pick their spots. This is Pat Thompson, who had a couple of punts blocked a week ago. And we'll see if San Diego State decides to come after him. This is Gilbert, who is back to receive the deep man 35. Pat, after a couple of blocks, you get a little gun shy? Well, of course, it never happened to me, but uh, hit the pad, I'll tell you right now. I would definitely be tight. They didn't come after it, which surprised me. Got away a pretty good one. Gilbreth with a 33. Bubble it. Looked like he got it back. A 39-yard kick, no return, and we'll be back in San Diego, California, in a scoreless game. That's a great sign. 78 degrees. Windshield makes it 74. <laughs> Tough to take in San Diego. I may, I may not leave. Although we are going to Honolulu, aren't we? 6.42 to go. San Diego State. Santa's back to throw on first down. Dumps it off to Gilmore over the middle. Gilmore up to the 44, maybe the 45-yard line. He'll have a first down. And it was Von Collin making the tackle. He's number nine, but he is a linebacker and the leading tackler on this ball club. Update some scores for you. Notre Dame in a thriller. Wins by one over Southern Cal. About the first break they've had all year. Georgia over Georgia Tech in a grudge match down there. Auburn had to come from behind, but they beat Ray Perkins in Alabama. LSU and Tulane scoreless tonight. Florida, Florida State tonight, 10-10. Second quarter. We'll keep you updated on everything. First and 10. State Sanders again wants to throw again. Dumps it off. This is Awald. His tight end he won. Awald had it, took a step, and dropped the ball. Oh boy, they ran that up. This, this is the same pattern they ran earlier when they got Blanchard over the top. Awald just going to go right across and take the zone, but they don't go with him this time. They're in their drop. This could have been a big play. He should not have dropped that pass. He's just so busy running. Boy, he should have got credit for five catches on that if he did pull it down. This that could have been a big play. It's already going to the East-West Shrine game and the Senior Bowl. He's an excellent player, but he dropped that one. He won't get that open very often. He's got a bad ankle and a bruised sternum. He's been fighting that, but uh, nonetheless, he should have caught the football. And he knows it. Santa's gets away from Buck. The outcome and hits Gilbert, or excuse me, Gilmore between the numbers, and he couldn't hold it. Santa's must be saying to himself, look, guys, I, I don't mind you dropping some of the tough ones, but the ones that I put in your chest, you got to hold? Well, BYU, the linebackers, the middle backers are going to drop into the zone right here. They're just going to play a zone, and they look for AWOL. He's open again underneath. You notice right now, 51's trying to catch up to him. Mikhail, the problem here, really, is just the drop, because he would have uh, had some yardage there, and Santa's has got to be frustrated. They put pressure on him early, didn't throw the ball well the first series. Now he's throwing it well in the drop. And he faces third and ten right now. Chased out of the pocket again. They got it this time. The sack will go to Kabusi. They are sending different linebackers to make a four-man rush. The three-man down line and one of the linebackers. That time it was Kabusi and he got him. Steve Kabusi, number 58, is going to make this play. They ran a game. 75 went outside. He went inside. Kabusi got him by the jersey and pulled him down. But a poor series. Two drop passes and a sack. Ross comes in to kick again. His third punt of the first quarter. 
That's his best kick of the night. Long and high, and Brian O'Brien back to the 13-yard line. Nice wall here, though. He's got it. Big return for O'Brien, and if they keep getting him blocking like that, he'll break one sometime tonight. A 20-yard return there. It's nothing, nothing. First four. Five minutes and 20 seconds to go in a rapidly moving first quarter from San Diego, California. Bring him out with the football. They have it at their own 34-yard line, first and 10. Lindsley leads them out. Well, they've run on first down every series so far. I think they're going to put it up first down here. How do you know these things? Blitz, and they got it. They got there in a hurry. Coming from the outside, inside was the setting. And from the outside was Baroness. San Diego State. No, he didn't. San Diego State decided they're going to come out and they're not going to give Lindsley time to sit back there and pick them apart. <laughs> they get it up the middle, the pressure, and the outside, no chance for him. The loss of nine. Earlier in the year, he was sacked 13 times. That was against the University of Washington. For sacks like that, you can hardly blame on the quarterback. Go! Good tackle, little screen here, maybe, Michael. He got it back to the original line of scrimmage. Mike Wilder, number 42, made the stop for the Aztecs. Well, you're on fire. You've been to two in a row. Well, it's a pleasure, you know, watch someone like Lavelle Edwards work. I mean, the guy has the kind of mind that I'm accustomed to in the pro game. A lot of very, uses the same plays over and over again, year after year. Like you said, it's a matter of using his personnel well. He's frustrated this year because he's not getting the ball deep, so he's got to go with the yeah, underneath we'll pattern. So go to the shotgun this time on the third and ten situation for the Cougars. The Aztecs showing blitz. They've got eight men at the line of scrimmage. They send five, and the pass is off the fingertips of Richard Saints. That was a great pass by Lindsley. He really got that one in there under tremendous pressure, and Zayas couldn't hold it. This ball definitely should have been caught. The uh, wide receiver also read this blitz, Mike. He cut to the post. He got little... Oh, the defensive back jumped in front of him, but that's a definite catch. You can't throw the ball any better. And he had eight people coming at him. A lot of drops tonight. It's a beautiful, uh, beautiful weather. These balls should be caught. Oh, and he got banged after he threw it. Here's the kick that is going to take the bounce for Brigham Young, but it goes out of bounds. They mark it inside the 30-yard line. A 36-yard kick. And San Diego State will start from there. Watch Lindsley again. Well, quarterbacks, you know, they have moments of heroics where they can beat a blitz, and he makes a perfect throw here, and he gets nothing out of it but a bruise in his chest and a sore back. That was Baroness who really leveled them. Neither the team able to do much on offense, and they've been hurt by drops. And Lindsley now talking to the coaches upstairs. That's nice to see a dirty jersey, though. I like grass fields. Aren't too many of them left to see go with Hardy, the tailback. Get him to the 34. Gain of almost five yards. Gain over a 1,000 yards a year ago. 8.49 coming into this ball game. Second team uh, Western Athletic Conference backfield this year. He was first team a year ago. He's had five 100-yard games this season. Unusual for a team that averages less than 100 yards a game on the ground. He's done a great job. Nobody behind Santos this time. Quickly out to Hardy. A flag is down as Hardy's driven out of bounds at the 43-yard line. Hardy has 35 catches on the air. We'll check out the flag for you. It's in the San Diego State backfield, and it's a hole. You know, you're mentioning that Hardy has had a number of 100-yard-plus games this year, and yet... The team averages less than 100. It's because they get sacked. Sanders lost 242 yards this year as a quarterback. Here we go on the pass rush. I can't see it there. Wait, after the throw. Well, that flag did come in real late. Looked like it was after the throw. Holding on the offense. Still second down. Second down and now 15. And the crowd, very quiet so far, have not had a lot to cheer about. That's Awalt, the big tight end, moving to the bottom part of the picture. Sanders makes the play action. There goes Jason Buck. Got him. Couldn't hold him. I'm sorry, Knight was after him. And a few 
Luttrell ended up on top of him, along with Jason Buck. 6'6", 285, Sean Knight is, and you said it earlier, Jason Buck will get a lot of double coverage, double teaming at the line, so Knight will just come in here, a little stunt, again, the linebacker takes the block to him, you see it, 58, and now it's just Knight, one-on-one -on -one out in the open field, he had enough strength to pull him down, stop him, now here comes the sack. And it helps when you're an Albert oh, uh, Trophy winner to get those kind of sacks. So that was a cheap one. you got to give that one to Knight. For Buck, 10 and a half on the year. Knight has 14 and a half. That is the third sack tonight for the Brigham Young defense. Third to mine. Gilbert makes the catch up to the 34-yard line, driven out of bounds. It'll be about five yards shy of the first down. I'll have to kick it away. Let's get out of Tim Brando. In that last series, Mike and Pat, we got a true example of what the problem is for San Diego State. It's Sean Knight. They're doubling Buck, but Knight is getting free. That, along with some blitzes, that's been the key to this point. DeRocher's got to do a better job against Sean Knight. They call him the neck, and he's got a big one. He's played a big role so far. Boy, sure has, Tim. Ross is on the punt. 145 to go in the squirrel's first quarter. Gets away another beauty. Did they stop it or not? No. A 66-yard punt by Wayne Ross. Should have been 65 yards net, too. They just didn't play it well. Huh, that's got to be frustrating for him. And Denny Stoltz wants to know what happened. No, his player is, is laying in the end zone. This ball, this ball tried its best to stop for him. Right here, he's across the line of scrimmage. I mean, uh, the goal line. Now, tap it back in. But see, both feet, both feet are in the end zone. It doesn't count. Excellent camera coverage. But that'll cost them. They'll have to move it back out to the 20. Well, we almost had two of those in a row now. Sure, on the one yard line. Great effort by Jensen. Did everything he could to keep that baby in there. Last time, Pat, when Brigham Young got the ball, you said they'd throw on first down. They did. What do you think they'll do this time? Well, I think they've got to get the ball to their tight end, Bellini. I think they're going to have to go with the play action. They're not in this uh, twin set, so. Backs are split. They move in Parker. Take the reverse, and Parker Keith only gets out to the 21-yard line. We're trying to show them the reverse there. Aseni makes the tackle. I think it's pretty evident that both teams are tight here. You know, BYU is trying to retain yep. their dynasty, and I just think San Diego State, you know, they've lost nine in a row to this team. And although Denny Stoltz is new to the area, you can just feel that they're very nervous right now. I agree with you. Down to a minute to go. There's Lindsley on second and nine. Parker is on a wing. Lindsley straight back to throw. Has time this time. Completes the short one to Parker out of the backfield. And quickly up to get him with Wilder. Last couple that uh, Lindsley has thrown have had some heat on him. Well, he definitely has the arm when he has time. They say his biggest problem is that when he gets a lot of pressure, and you have to remember, earlier in the year, first three out of his first four starts, he threw for over 300 yards. But when they put pressure in his face, he makes mistakes, which a lot of quarterbacks are prone to do. I'd say almost all of them. Third and three. Neither team has been able to establish anything on offense. Hey, Mula. Trying to bounce outside. Big hit by Richard Brown, number 50, who got him, let him go, and went back and got him again. Brown is 235, a middle linebacker in that 43 defense. He made a fine play on that one. That is the end of the first quarter here in San Diego. Our score, San Diego State nothing, Brigham Young nothing. Nothing, nothing as we start the second quarter and as we begin the second 15 minutes of play, Pat Thompson will be punting the ball away. BYU faces a fourth and three at its own 27. Boy, a nice high floating kick in Gilbert back to the 26. Signaled the fair catch, then started to run with it. And that may cost them. Just another case of nerves. They're just not playing sharply right now. 46-yard punt. Nice kick by Thompson. 
And once you call a fair catch, you can't run. He was just skittering around back there, but uh, that's that's one of those trivial penalties. Yeah, it shouldn't. Uh, you wonder about that one a little bit. Hardly deceptive because the referees can uh, blow the whistle and stop it anyhow, but they classify it as a delay of game penalty. It'll cost them five. I think it should be called illegal skittering. I think the operative verb there is. Here we go. Yeah. Look at him. He did. I mean, he just. You know what happened? He caught the ball and he saw some good blocks. And he decided, I'm going to run now. <laughs> and the official decided to throw a flag and walk off five yards. So the Aztecs will go back to their 22 yard line and start from there. Well, we expect a lot of points, but I think it's Pat to pointed out both teams a little bit nervous right now especially San Diego State they have a right to be nervous they haven't been in this position in a long time they've got a chance to win the conference championship after an excellent year Santa's being pressured by Futrell gets it out of there and complete up to the 35 yard line nice catch by Hardy the tackle made by Von Collin the linebacker but there is a flag down back in the backfield Illegal motion, I think, Mike. And it is. Hardy's a good receiver coming out of the backfield. Here's the first quarter statistics, and you'll see that San Diego State minus 22 rushing. And that's because of the sacks. They take those uh, sack yards off the rushing stats. And they're down to minus 22. Hardly a scintillating performance for either offense. That's frustrating for Todd Santos, the quarterback for San Diego State. And he makes good throws, they drop it, makes a nice play there, and they have illegal motion. It's really tough for them to get any rhythm on offense right now. He's got a first and 20 right now. Back of the 12. Hardy and Gilmore, the back split behind him. Oh, Gilmore. They were waiting on him. Gilmore gets outside. Von Collin makes the stop again, number nine. Got some help from Richard Hobbs, 57. It was a very slow developing draw. Numbers on Gilmore for the year, less than 100 carries in the season. I think it's a situation where they want to go back over the middle. They want to use AWOL to clear out underneath Mike, go with that crossing route. They got one in earlier to Brett Blanchard and it looked really nice. Second and 14. Conyers being covered by Thomas all the way down to 40. Conyers, 25 catches this year, 24 have been first downs. So they like to get the ball downfield to him. He's averaging 19 yards a grab. Santos aired it out a little bit on that one. I think it's going to be unusual, Pat, to see San Diego State get deep with that pass rush from BYU. He's simply not going to have the time to stand back there and unload it. Well, that's what happened on that play. Uh, in fact, uh, Jason Buck put pressure on him. He had to release a little quicker than he wanted to. Over through the receiver. Who was open? Santos now 4 out of 10, 56 yards. Got a couple of drops. Pressure again. Floats it high over the middle for Jackson in quickly. Jackson covered very well by Thomas, who gave him a little elbow as he tried to get inside. He wouldn't have made it anyhow. And Santa shakes his head as he runs off the field for San Diego State. Because his man tonight have been the punters. And this is Wayne Ross back at it again. Nine-man front for BYU. He led it in the first quarter. <laughs> O'Brien is deep to receive. And here come the Cougars. Didn't get there, but he got off a poor kick, and it takes a bad bounce for San Diego State. And for the second time tonight, Brigham Young will start in San Diego State territory. Still scoreless, we're in the second quarter. Thirteen minutes, 42 seconds to go. Second quarter of play. If you just joined us, you have missed no scoring. It is nothing, nothing. Mike Patrick, Pat McAnally, and Tim Brando. Glad you could be with us on a Saturday night of CFA action from San Diego. Brigham Young, after only a 20-yard punt, has the ball at the San Diego State 43-yard line. First and 10. Hanson number two in the backfield for the first time for Brigham Young. And they'll go on the end around. As they had Parker set out on a wing and 
brought him back. Well, Brett Barrett has made some nice plays. He's put a lot of, put a lot of pressure on Lindsley tonight. Now he's just going to run down the ball. He's the offside defensive end. You can see his speed here. He's not real heavy, but he's a hustler. He can really run. He's put a lot of pressure as a pass rusher and lateral pursuit right there. Gain of four on the last play, second and six. And then Harold Barlow, number 86, ended up pouncing on him. As he tried to run back up the pocket. That time he just couldn't find anybody. That's nice coverage. But you know the play before, Mike, you look at someone like Fairness, this is where the game of football has changed. So much speed on the field now. In the old days, you'd run that play to the left, uh, to Parker, and you, you just leave someone like the defensive end on the opposite side unlocked. You can't do that anymore. Those guys run along the line of scrimmage and make them hit heel. That's a four-yard game. Especially when so many teams choose guys who can play uh, down line and more linebacker and do have the speed. Third and the left. Lindsley near side this time. Tipped away. Almost caught on the ground. Almost caught by Zayas, who was lying flat on his back. It would have been most certainly the most exciting thing we had happen so far tonight. Oh, this would, uh, but again, Lindsley forced his ball. This is almost intercepted. He throws it right into a double coverage, and he's not pressured yet. He just kept his eye on one receiver, and he's going to force it. I think it's Hicks who gets a hand on it. Right, but this should have been intercepted right here. Throws it right in between two defenders. Now watch, this ball is almost caught, though. He's laying on his back. Hello. It wasn't Hicks. It was Mitchell who broke it up. Hicks was over there. Almost an incredible catch. A very short kick. Fair catch called for San Diego State will start at 16 after a 28-yard punt. 12 9 to go in a scoreless first half. And we'll be back in San Diego, California in just a moment. All the football fans across America know that uh, your ESPN crew will go anywhere we have to, even if we don't want to go, to bring you great college football. Take next week. We have to go to Honolulu. Michigan at Hawaii. Hope you'll join us next Saturday night. Brush the snow off your front porch. Come inside. And we will bring you all the action. Michigan and Hawaii. San Diego State starts from at 16. Party. Got maybe a yard, yard and a half. Led a KO. Horse pound have brought him down. A KO is a load at 225. Looks bigger than that. Got a score update for you. LSU, they're going to the Sugar Bowl. Beating Tulane tonight, 14-3. The plays on the ground for both teams, Pat, for some reason look very slow developing. No quick hitters. I think they're just predictable. They've all been called where the defense is looking for it. Bob Jensen, back of quarterback, warming up for BYU. That's interesting. Savage, quick toss. Hits his tight end, Awald, up to about the 23-yard line. Brought down by Corey Rasmussen, the strong safety. Quick pop pass that time. You don't have to worry about the pass rush if you unload that quick. Well, that's a nice read by Todd Sanders. Awald just goes inside. Watch, you look for the ball right there. That's called a looking. That's his read. He saw the blitz, too. It's both the read by the quarterback and the tight end. Nice job. He'll need to do that a lot in the pros because the pros rely on the tight end to make those reads almost every play. Young man out of Sacramento, California. Third down at Quaquation, where San Diego State is only one out of five so far tonight. Well, one tackle and got very close to first down yarding. Good effort by Hardy. Got it on second effort. And we'll see where the officials mark it and what they'll do with it. First down. Well, I'd have never believed Michael that they'd be battling and cheering for first downs here. We're looking for a lot of points. These two teams are explosive, but they're not doing it tonight thus far. Oh, sort of might like uh, might sort of like the uh, floodgates. I'll say that right in a second. It might be like floodgates. Uh, once somebody scores, it might never stop. First and ten for the Aztecs. Santa's close. That one over the middle of Jackson paid for it. He took a shot from Wilcox and Shumway. Boy, receivers hate that. 
Well, what happened on that play? They ran uh, the flanker deep into the post, and the safety said, I'm not going to cover you. They're not going deep, and that's what's happening here. Their offense isn't, rhythm, isn't in rhythm. They're not playing well. So the safety gambled and said, I'm just going to go after the receiver crossing in front of me. He didn't respect the deep route. That position to be in is a split end. You don't want to be jumping. Remember Charlie Taylor talking about Billy Kilmer throwing the ball that way, and he'd say, I just hate it. Second and ten. Of course, that was the only way Billy could throw it, and it's on the screen. And Gilmore is in trouble. Dumped back at the 20-yard line. That shove way the corner all the way in the backfield. He had help from Mateo, who would have made the tackle if he had it. Well, this is where the defensive line get excited. Again, they run a stunt again with the linebacker, taking the two blockers. Buck thinks he's got another sack. Knight's in there, too, but that's, of course, that's what the offense wants. But what I find interesting about what BYU is doing tonight is they're really using their outside backers on these twists. They take in, they take out the two uh, defensive, or offensive linemen, and then Knight and Buck break outside, and that really helps the defensive tackles. It's tough enough trying to block, uh, block Jason Buck and Sean Knight without knowing where they're going to be. Whistle's going to stop the play. Good out to Tim Brando on the sideline. He's got some information for us. Tim? Lavelle Edwards just talked to Bob Jensen, his backup quarterback, moments ago. I asked him to warm up. That's what Pat noticed. And then shortly thereafter, Edwards called him to his side and started chatting with him. Lindsley has pulled away a bit from Lavelle. So I think it's a safe assumption that Jensen could be in the next series. If not, then don't be surprised that he came in the next series following another one for Lindsley. But it's obvious that Jensen is on the mind of Lavelle Edwards in the next series. Thank you, Tim. On the offense. And it's a procedure call against San Diego State, which will cost him another I'm gonna go. five yards. Drew, I'm going to go back. Well, there's a lot of pressure on the center when he's got to snap this ball from the shotgun. He just didn't hear it. Look at all the linemen had already moved, and then he finally snapped it. Easy call for the officials. Third and 22. Santa's under pressure. Gets away from it, deep down the middle, up for grabs, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Scott Peterson. And he's back to midfield. The pass was intended for Alfred Jackson, but there were three white and blue shirts surrounding Jackson, and Peterson just played center field. Well, they went in with their nickel package. They put four defensive linemen. He just played center field and he intercepted this pass. Easy play, but you notice here this time, 58. UC comes inside. They took Buck outside. The linebacker came inside. They were no, they just weren't prepared for it. And he just throws this up for grab. Easy interception for a center fielder. Look at three guys. Cannot throw that ball with three defenders like that. Nice defensive strategy there. 17 yard interception return after Peterson. Second interception this season. Two to go first half. We have only had six first downs in this ball game. Three for San Diego State and three for Brigham Young. Neither offense has ever been able to get on track to this one. And there are the offensive coaches hey, don't going over what they would like to do the next time the Aztecs get their hands on the football. Right now it's Brigham Young football at their own 49. Lindsley still in there at quarterback. Jensen had been warming up. Lindsley to throw wants to screen. Hey, Newland. Another big hit by Mike Wilder, 42, is playing a heck of a game of linebacker. Well, you mentioned earlier, uh, Mike, it's true. It just uh, the play looks like it's in slow motion. Everything they're doing, yeah, just not a crispness to their play. They set this up. They ran their deep receivers deep. And they're just going to set up, drop this little screen here. And at first, you think it's going to be a nice play, but 42 comes right up. Mike Wilder, we said earlier, very active linebacker. He's only 185 pounds, and he really covers the field well. Took on Hay Mooley and drove him out of bounds, gained of only a yard at midfield. This was changing his foot. Flips. Pulls him out of the pocket and drives him out of bounds at a cost of three yards. Guess who? Wilder. Wilder closes to the football as well as anybody we've seen all year. With 185 pounds, he better have some speed. <laughs> yeah, you're right. But you're right, so many of these positions defensively are interchangeable. Guys play defensive end and they play linebacker. This guy, Mike Wilder, plays well, linebacker. He runs like a defensive back. That's Used to be a safety. That puts a lot of pressure on the offense. He would be the uh, substitute strong safety tonight if anything happened to Water. Lindsay now three out of seven, 25 yards. All his completions have been to his backs on third and 12. Four man rush. Levy a city 
blamed him from behind. And once again, it looked like good coverage downfield. Well, what's happened to this BYU offense? We mentioned it earlier. They have not been able to get the ball downfield. And you can only live with short passes for so long. San Diego State's come in. They're just taking away those short routes. And he has nowhere to go. No pressure on their deep safeties. Thompson into punt on 4th and 18. That was the 4th sack. Had a 66-yarder last time. Booms another one. Gilbert. Nowhere to go. Buried at the 15-yard line. A 41-yard kick. A 3-yard return. 8.25 to go in the half. It's oh, another nothing in San Diego. Yeah. Nothing, nothing. Brigham Young, San Diego State, 8.25 to go in the second quarter from San Diego's Jack Murphy. We State. certainly expect a lot more pressure from the BYU defensive line, but right now, it's San Diego State is chalking up a lot of sacks. Levy and Sinny, nice play right there. They're putting all kinds of pressure on Lindsley, taking them out of their game plan. They can't dump the ball off. San Diego State with excellent execution defensively. It has been Pat McAnally's kind of night. Ten punts so far. Well, it's very disappointing. As I mentioned at the top of the show, I grew up watching black football. These guys are normally so exciting. They're so wide open on offense, and they haven't shown it thus far. Now the Tim Brando. Rob Awald is really the catalyst for the San Diego State offense. As of yet, he hasn't been a factor except for that drop. Don't be surprised if they try to get him open, either on that crossing pattern or on the fade drop. Pat, let's watch for it here. Second and call it two. Market past the 30 and he'll have it, so San Diego State getting better field position down there. Well, Robert Awal probably will be the first uh, tight end selected in the entire draft, not only because he catch, but also because he can block. Here he goes, man to man, takes on Hobbs, controls him, controls him, now it's up to the back, to find the crack, really should have gone right inside. That will keep a nice job by Awal on that play. Got some help too as Hardy came by and chopped his legs out from under him. First and 10. Lindsley again talking to the uh, coaches up in the press box. Santa's with time, dumps it over the middle, got Hardy. After about the 33, there's that control plant, uh, control passing game. Tackle made by Von Collin, the linebacker number nine. Another problem for Robert Awald. They're a, they're a great tight end as he's been injured. He's had a lot of problems with his ankle earlier, his sternum. And despite all those injuries, he's still regarded so highly by the pro scouts. Never had a bruised sternum. I did one time. So painful. It hurts worse than bruised ribs. Second and five. Gilmore just plows forward in there. Von Collin again was in on the stop. Very active linebacker at 230. Jensen on the sideline. A little Bell Edwards, Brigham Young offense. Don't know whether he'll be coming in, but he's certainly getting ready. Usually when a quarterback's coming in, he's got his hat on. Well, it doesn't make you feel good as a starting quarterback when a kid keeps warming up and throwing the ball behind you every time. Third and three. San Diego State trying to get something going on offense with six and a half minutes to go second period. You're talking about a late flag. And there's Futrell, who was playing without his helmet. Somebody took it off right after they started to play, and that was very late. Flags are in slow motion, too, I guess. Yep. And it's going to be an interference call. Well, they say nose guards are crazy. <laughs> you hear about these guys. They get double teamed all the time. David Futrell, right in the middle of your screen, is going to lose his helmet early in this play, but it's not going to stop him. I guess we can't see it right there. Here he comes. He's not going to give up. He wants to get his sack even without a helmet. First down. I guess you'd say that was a heads up play, but very dangerous. You didn't say that, did you? Yes, you did. The interference 
will go against Brigham Young, and it's a first down for the Aztecs in their own 43. And Sanders wants to throw again. Frustrating for the Aztecs, uh, particularly the offensive coordinator right now, but you know, they haven't be they've lost the BYU nine straight years, and the closest they've come is 20 points. So they've yep. kept this, and they, you know, they have a chance to take the lead here, and they've already gotten rid of almost the, the first half. Second and four. They'll go to the eye. Hardy, the deep man behind Gilmore. Hardy. No, sir, may have lost a yard. Right into the middle of the line, and it was nose guard David Futrell, who was third on the team in tackles, wrapped them up. I can't say enough about what Dennis Stoltz has done here. He wants to establish a national power in San Diego. He just doesn't want to win a few ball games. Not just looking for a whack championship, although that's the first step. He wants it all, and he thinks he can get it in San Diego. Well, he had a lot of options, and I, I think it really was meaningful that he said he came here because he thinks he'd get national prominence at this right. school. And I think he's right. It's a great city. He's got a timeout as they want to talk about it on a third and four situation. Maybe the biggest play of their season right here, and they'd like to come up with one that they like. One thing about a pro town with San Diego is there's a lot of people that like to spend time outdoors here with the beautiful climate, the beautiful scenery, and all there is to do. And of course, it's got the Chargers, it's got the soccer. It's got a lot of things out here that people enjoy. But when Don Coriel, who was going to be honored at halftime, incidentally, uh, and certainly should be, he did a brilliant job here and with the Chargers. I mean, here meaning San Diego State and then with the Chargers. But uh, I think this city is, is big enough and has good enough sports fans so that San Diego State football can be a major attraction here. He said he, he didn't want to own the town, he just wants Saturday night. I think he's got a good shot at it, too. You're right. You know, I, I played here earlier in my career against the Chargers when they weren't playing well, and they didn't put very, very many people in the stands. They started winning under with Danny Fouts. That exciting offense. Uh, they packed him in. This is one of the toughest places to play. And look at it tonight. They've got it. This place almost filled up. Well, it, it, I think it helps give a, a place identity, too. I don't think anyone in the country can hear the, the name of the city of San Diego without thinking about Danny Fouts. And that's what they'd like to do with San Diego State football. Third and four right here. Big play for the Aztecs. They'll go to the full house backfield. It's a situation you like to look for your tight end. Let's look, 89. Hey, Walt, maybe open on this play. This is Fisher, the man in motion. Two tight ends. Hardy. Far side, not a lot of running. Running, running, running. set up with a timeout and his team leads by seven. That's Lavelle Edwards of Brigham Young, his team with 5.09 to go in the half now, down 7-0 to San Diego State, finally got something going on offense. 
And there is Hardy, who ran it in from eight yards out to give his club a one-touchdown lead. They'll kick it away to O'Brien and Parker. It's messed up. Somebody drops it or it takes a funny bounce and they break. Funny bounce. As a player, you'd be happy to get something to hang this long in the air. Watch this ball. It stays up, stays up. Now it's going to hit the ground and it's going to stay up longer. But you're right. This really hurts the coverage team. It flakes them out of their lanes. And really, Parker does a nice job here. He's going to cut back nice. About four or five fakes right there. Now, they're just out of their lanes. They don't know what to do and he finds a seam. They're lucky that wasn't a touchdown. Nice job by the safety there to take him out. Jensen is in at quarterback. The sophomore gives to Haymoli. Fumble. Haymoli got it back. Marinez was coming hard from the outside and almost got there. And as often happens with the new quarterback, he had a little problem on the exchange between the quarterback and the running back. Nine play drive, 85 yards. Very impressive that time for San Diego State. Took 316 off the clock. Six yards loss on that last play. Jensen has only thrown the ball 21 times. Two touchdowns, two interceptions. Wants to throw on the roll this time. And it's complete to his tight end, Darren Hanley. Wilder drives him out of bounds. Boy, if the football's out there, Wilder's going to be around it. Jensen just going to roll out to the right, and again, it's just a very short route here. They're only going to pick up three or four yardage, but they put so much pressure on him up the middle, they want to get him outside. But look, three or four yard gain. You're not going to win ball games very often with those type of passes. Driven out of bounds at midfield, and it's third and call it 13. Under pressure, Jensen is running for it. Got to the 35 yard line. Good effort. Mitchell dragged him down but he made the first down. And no sliding in safe for Jensen. He went for it. A part of that really is because he ran that sprint out. He got him to loosen up. They had been burning him up the middle, up the middle, up the middle. He scared him with a little rollout. He just takes it. You know, one thing like a substitute quarterback likes to do when he comes in, he has a chance to pull it out, complete a little pass. Next time, he, has a, he sees a big hole. He picks up a first down like that. Makes you feel high. You're, you're pumped up sure. now. I think he'll go down field. Another dimension, too, because he can obviously run with a football. Hey, Mooley can't get outside once again. Wilder is out there, but the first man that hit him was Harold Barlow. Barlow was in the backfield waiting, and Hey, Mooley, who has had such a great year carrying the football, really hasn't had much of a chance tonight. Good looking Barlow out of Compton, California. Clock ticking with 3.25 to go. First half, 7 up in San Diego State. The Aztecs going for that Western Athletic Conference Championship. They can win it all tonight. Five-man rush. They come after him, dumps it off, and it's complete. He's got Trevor Molini as tight end. That'll be close to another first down, maybe a yard shy. Lindsley on the bench as Bob Jensen has come in to replace him. Lindsley, three out of seven, had an interception. Only 25 yards. But in his defense, they really came after him. Jensen has not seen a lot of pressure so far. A third and a short two. Molini, the man in motion. A move. Got the first down as he crosses the 25, maybe to the 24-yard line. Stopped by the center of that Aztec defense. Asseni was credited with the stop again. He's been very active. There's Hamuli's stats, only averaging two yards a carry. Coming into this ball game, he was averaging almost 4.4 every time he touched the football on the ground.
Chris Tilney gets credit for the sack, but they had three guys after Jensen. And that's the fifth time a San Diego State defensive player has scored a sack against Brigham Young. Chris Kilby. He is the backup most of the time for Levy Asani. So Bob Jensen's fast. We saw him run earlier in the day, but I'm telling you something, he better be able to jump about 20 feet in the air to get away here because they had three guys all around him. No chance. Baroness was the guy who chased him out of the pocket. Baroness made a lot of plays tonight. Second down and a mile. Dumped over the middle and what a shot on Haymuli by Brown. And then he pats him on the head. Stick gets up. Knock him down, help him up. Well, Denny Stoltz uh, told me yesterday that he has a lot of confidence in his cornerbacks, and they put him in a lot of man situations. That's one reason they've been able to put so much heat on the BYU quarterbacks. Two things. One, they're running short routes, and two, they're gambling with some man-to-man -man coverage and putting the extra guys in front. Now third and 23. And as Lavelle Edwards gets a good look at it with a minute 26 to go in the hand. who got there, and they got there in a hurry. Let's watch Mark Bellini, number 11, right in the middle of your screen, right here. No catches tonight thus far. He hasn't had the ball very often in the last month. He appears to be open, but again, look, he has underneath coverage and deep coverage on him. By the time the ball got out there, no chance. Timeout called by San Diego State with 58 seconds left, and there is the return by Hicks, who's had a couple of big ones, almost 150 yards in returns on interceptions in two weeks. Boy, did he have some open grass in front of him, didn't he? Only a junior out of Pasadena. I said earlier, he still has a lot of confidence in that secondary. Not only to guard a man-to-man, -man, but to make up ground once that one piece of ball's in the air. And they have contributed to that uh, plus turnover ratio that this team has, and they have come on strong in, in the latter part of the season, which is what you need to have out of a ball club that's challenging for a title. And you saw the scoreboard story there. San Diego State with one left. Jensen on the sideline, he threw his interception. What we see tonight is two teams that can really throw the ball. The defenses are dominating because they're getting pressure on those quarterbacks. Not only getting the sacks, but they're hurrying with throws, not getting people when they are open, and they're making mistakes with their throws. You've got to give it to the defensive line and the linebackers right now. Second and 17 for San Diego State. At their own 45. Sean Knight, and he just came in there and drilled it. Knight has four sacks from the Alton Trophy winner, Jason Buck, on the other side, and there's five for each club tonight. Well, this is literally a nightmare for the quarterback. This guy's been in the backfield the whole game. Again, another stunt. He goes inside. They double-team the wrong guy, and he just in clean. Frustrating for receiver, Robert Awal, has been waiting for the ball, looking, looking around. I want the ball coach. He doesn't know that the quarterback's on his back already. San Diego State has the ball at its 35. It must get to the 37 of Brigham Young. And they'll go up with the delay to Hardy. Hardy, 45, driven out of bounds, stops the clock with 10 seconds left. And it will bring up fourth and still almost 20 to go for San Diego State. So the big interception is not going to pay off at any points. Back-to-back well, -back sacks will uh, not only silence the crowd, it'll stop your offense from sure to reverse in a hurry. Dennis Stoltz trying to get his uh, offensive unit off the field. The punting team is already on with 10 seconds left. If you're Brigham Young, do you come after this one, Pat? I think you have to. They're not making anything happen offensively. I think you got to try to get something on special teams. Ross, as 
they came after him with good protection, got it away, and kicked it toward the sideline, even got the great bounce and put it out of bounds to the 17-yard line with four seconds to go in the first half, a 39-yard kick, and he knew they were going to come after him. And Dennis Stoltz now telling his ball club what he wants them to do in the last four seconds, and we can expect Brigham Young to go with something a little conservative down here. You don't want to take a chance and give up some points. They just want to get in that locker room, get to the chalkboard, and figure out how they can stop this aspect. Defense is playing excellent football right now. And they only have 52 yards in offense in the first half. That's incredible. I think it's just a tribute. They had a young offensive line. Their quarterback situation hasn't been as strong as it had in the past. The aspects are just taking advantage of it. Jensen in there at quarterback. And he'll hand it off to Hay Mooley. And Hay Mooley takes the big hit from Mike Wilder. Number 42 goes down. The first half, and Dennis Stoltz will take his club into the locker room with a leg up on the Western Athletic War. We'll be on the beach in Honolulu, Tim, and we'll be watching it that night, I'll tell you. First and 15. Here comes the blitz. Hanson gets outside. 30, 25, 23 yard line, first down, Brigham Young, and they have found a way to do it on the ground once again. The free safety hits. Had to make the tackle, and Denny Stoltz says, come on, get up, get back in there. Hanson, three carries, 38 yards. San Diego State flips on his play, and they had to leave locker, but he didn't need to hit anyone. Hanson just has all kinds of room to run. They just burnt that blitz, and Hicks, again, with him. he's made a number of saving tackles tonight. That could have been a touchdown. You're right about it. Hey, he was out there looking for someone to hit. He had to slow down and hit someone who was already out of the block. And again, this time, not much. Got inside the 20 to about the 19-yard line. And Kilby, 44, and Richard Brown, number 50, were in there on it. Fourth first down on this drive. They only had five total in the entire first half. Second down, seven yards to go. Clock winding down, 7.55 to go. Third quarter of play from San Diego. Three wide receivers on this play. Hey, Mooley will get it out of the backfield and drag down. Nice tackle by Farinez. Well, Farinez is playing so well tonight. They had a pulling guard in that play. Came up and just drilled him. He just threw him down and still made the tackle. He's all over the field very quick. Tough kid. Me and Wilder have had excellent games. They have have uh, Lauder and Hicks. Out of the second there. Third and five. Big play here. San Diego State trying to hang on to that 7 nothing lead. Jensen wants the run. Flag is down. And Jensen dives forward to the six. It would be enough for the first down. But we'll check out the flag, which is back at the 17-yard line. BYU went outside. The wide receiver jumped a little early on that play. And it will be against the Cougars. Unforgivable. You can't have your wide receivers go outside. All they have to do is watch the ball. They don't even have to hear the count. I went outside a few times. The coaches told me that. And I, I didn't like it, but that's the way it, they were telling you the truth. It was the top of your screen. He went early. Again, Jensen doing a nice job. He doesn't wait in that pocket very long, does he? No, he decides, I'm going to do it on my own. He's a tough runner, too. Yeah, he's taking advantage. And that's what a good quarterback does. Got to take what they give you. He doesn't avoid the hits. He goes looking for them. Third down and 10. After the penalty, it's back at the 22. They need to get just inside the 12. Four-man rush. Jensen will throw this time. Almost intercepted by Hicks. And it looked like Bellini thought the ball was going to someone else. He just turned around and watched. Let's go to Tim Brando. Tim. In this last series, Mike and Pat, we noticed that Jensen was starting in the second half. One of the reasons he's such a good runner. Hey, Mooley has still not been a factor rushing the football. We're talking about a 1,000-yard rusher almost on the season. So that's been the real problem for BYU in this game. But Jensen eased that tension on this last drive. Chitty is on to try a 39-yard field goal to get Brigham Young on the board. Plenty of life. And he's got it. So Brigham Young finally capitalizes on the running of reserve quarterback Bob Jensen. They get a field goal out of the drive and trail seven to three.
We've got six minutes, 54 seconds to go. Third quarter, Brigham Young has scored for the first time tonight on a field goal. And Chris German will kick it away. San Diego State ready to get the football back, leading 7-3. Gilbert and Corey Gilmore are deep to receive. German, nice kick this time. Gilmore, two yards deep in the end zone, fumbled it, brings it out. Still on his feet at the 25, up to the 26-yard line. Nice effort by Gilmore. And everybody else on the San Diego State side of the field was holding their breath after he fumbled the ball in the end zone and then still decided to bring it back out. Take a look at the scoring drive, but it was a good one, Pat, because they started from their own four-yard line and really worked it out of trouble. Got to give credit to Bob Jensen, that backup quarterback. He's come in and he's done the job. And he's done it on the ground. Brigham Young working on the offense for the next time it comes back in. Santos working the San Diego State offense. Worked against the Hardy on the first play, and Hardy dropped after a short game. Well, the last man up off the pile. It'll be second and seventh for the Aztecs. successful for it. Well, that was very nice because they jumped right over the middle, Buck, Futrell, Knight, it all rushed very hard. There was an opening. They just dumped it off. In fact, the referee almost knocked that down. That's the most dangerous thing about that play is the official right in the middle of the field, about five yards downfield. You have to avoid him and make the catch. Sanders now 9 out of 19, 121 yards, had a couple dropped early, and has had the one interception. First and 10. Aztecs at their own 44. Party. And a nice Boy, knifing it from the outside for Salanoa, number 33, who saw it coming and got there about the same time Hardy was a yard shy of the line of scrimmage. Update on LSU, they're up 31-3 over Tulane, third quarter. And Pacific has scored to make it 21-7 against Long Beach State, that's second year. Wendell Davis, we understand, in that ball game for LSU has three touchdown catches. Finest receivers we've had the pleasure of seeing all year long. Second, 10 Santos again. Tight end this time, and that's AWOL. They're all American candidates to the Brigham Young 45, and it looks like he's got a first down. About the second time we've seen this play, just a simple little pop. Tight end reads the backers blitzing. So it is the quarterback, Todd Santos, and he's just going to throw the ball. See the blitz is coming. Both middle linebackers come, and tight end just reads that quickly, and all Santos does is just dump it. Hey, well, experienced player, again, he's going to be a top-notch pro player. It is a first down. San Diego State driving with 4.47 to go third period. The Aztecs can win. The Western Athletic Conference with a win tonight. Hardy, once again, hit in the backfield. And they diagnosed that play pretty well. They're closing rapidly. Let's go down to the sideline and Tim Brando. Tim? Rob Awalt, that crossing pattern, we saw it uh, used effectively moments ago, Pat. We should mention he did not practice all week because of that swollen left ankle. And certainly he has been a key factor for San Diego State all year. And this is a gutsy performance for him. He's not only had the sternum problem earlier, but now also a swollen left ankle coming into the night's game. Second and nine. And Bill Moore is buried. Like that, you deserve to make four, right? Come on. Or they are using these clips very effectively. You know, when you have players like Buck and Knight on the defensive line and they occupy people, and your linebackers just come in untouched so often. A terrible feeling for a running back, too. You know, the linebacker and the ball are going to get there at the same time. One thing we have seen tonight is a lot of big, big hits. They are, they are hitting out there. 
the loss makes it third and 14. Now the officials have the clock stop, and they're taking a look at uh, one of the pads on the on uh, Dave DeRocher. Someone 6'7", 285, I don't know how many pads this guy needs. The leg would be enough. Third and 14. They'd like to keep the drive going, and they'll go out of the shotgun with Santa. Four-man rush, and good luck. Outland Trophy winner, Jason Buck. And nobody even bothered to slow him down. Boy, did they, boy, they just called this play right into his stomach, basically. He was just unblocked. And Santa's had nowhere to go. Boy, we've been calling his name on. It's so nice when you have a great player play this well. Yep. The guy wins the trophy, the Allen trophy, he comes out and just dominates this game. Santa's has been sacked seven times tonight. And this is Wayne Ross done a good job oh, hunting that came after him, didn't get there, and he sails another beauty out of there for O'Brien. The putter, there's nobody back to block, and O'Brien pays for it. Returns three yards after a 47-yard kick. It's still a 7-3 ball game. <laughs> 2 45 to go third quarter. San Diego State leading the Cougars of Brigham Young, the defending WAC champions. They've won or tied for it the last 10 years. Right now, the Cougars have a leg up on it. The running Cougars at BYU. No kidding. And the running quarterback, Bob Jensen, who's had quite a dimension in this ball club. Jensen in trouble. Nice move to get out of there. Picks up a block, and they still got him. What a great play by Brett Farinay. He shadowed him. Was deep down. Came back and made the tackle, and there's a flag now. Farinay has done a great job tonight at 210 pounds. And the first indication is a face pass call. Which would wipe out that great effort. And it is a face pass. Wipes out the sack. This is called a make it. It's going to be a counter action right here. Now the quarterback keeps the ball on bootleg. And it's one on one. He just won't give it up though. You're going to catch it now. He has no one to throw to. Right there. Definitely grab that face mask and pull him down. No question about it. Nice call by the coach. Watch that right hand. Right now. Right on it. Body goes one way. Your head goes the other. And it's a first and five situation for the Cougars. Trying to get outside. Excellent job again by a semi. Number 97, trailed the play, dove, and got him around the ankle. Who would have dreamt a couple hours ago that we'd be highlighting and, and isolating defensive linemen and linebackers, but they're the guys that are making the plays out there tonight. Sure are. And you're right, you don't think the San Diego State bring them young, you don't think of defense. You think there's the center. You think of receivers, and you think of quarterbacks. After tonight, they're going to think of Jason Buck. No kidding. just to throw it away because San Diego State had it figured out. Richard Brown and Mike Wilder were standing with a screen man saying, go ahead and throw it. Perfect coverage. They were in a man-to-man -man, uh, coverage in that case. They had the corners on the wide receivers, and Richard Brown had the pullback. That could have been an interception. He was fortunate that he threw that ball all the way over everybody's head. Good choice by Jensen, who was four out of eight for 28 yards in the interception, but that's not where he has made his mark tonight. He has made his mark running the football. 27 yards on five carries, and that includes two sacks, which really hurts his net total. Jumps it over the middle of the time behind Bellini, who was covered by Mitchell. And that pass, he was about two steps behind Bellini. And they'll have to give it up. Well, it's frustrating for Mark Bellini. He, you know, he caught a lot of passes early in the year. He had, he had a big career going into this season. They just haven't been able to get him the ball this year. Thompson, who has also been very active, and that's Gilbert, the team to receive. They don't come after him. They haven't come after him yet tonight. He's had two blocks a week ago, and he really crushed that one. Gilbert back to the 25. Trying to get out of sight, looking for a block. And that whole thing goes down, and he found the seam. This one is going to come back as Gilbert ran the width 
to the field to find a place to go. Got it back 20 yards, and the flag goes down, and it was thrown very late on that return. Well, this that's very questionable. I was watching that one very closely. It, it either falls, I clipped in the cliff. They may have fallen holding it. I want to see this. Yeah, Boy, didn't like it either. Well, early in this play, I thought there was going to be a cliff, and they didn't. They didn't call that. And it is a cliff. And for 55-yard punt. Now, this is minor, minor cliff in my mind. I think his arm was beyond there. That was clean in my book. And that, no, no, no way. That is not a cliff. And that's when he threw and the flag right there. The flag. You can see the official taking the flag out of his pocket. In 7-3, third quarter, we'll be back in a minute. The Cougar Blue is here tonight, but they're blue in another sense because they're down 7-3, to three, and their offense has been able to do very little against the fired-up San Diego State defense. The Aztecs now have the ball deep in their own territory, first and 10. Reed is in there to pull back. Hardy, the tailback, will get it. He's wrapped up quickly by Laddick Hale, number 51, and 57, Richard Hobbs. They got there in a hurry. The Kales had a pretty good ball game, too. Now, some penalties are so deceptive, Mike. You know, that was just a little weasel flipping, and it really cost them 30, bought almost 40 yards of field position, sure changes did. their whole offensive elbow. Second and 11, loss of a yard on that last play. CSC is wants to throw. Dumps it over the middle, and almost intercepted. Shumway had it. Gilbert turned defensive back and knocked it away from him. Shumway did a nice job, had it covered all the way, and then almost got the interception. Santos was fortunate to get rid of this ball. It's almost in his end zone. He gets hit right when he releases it. Again, that's not a sack, but it was pressure and almost intercepted right there. Boy, they're just not giving the quarterback any time at all tonight. You know, it's not a night to have the ball waiting to pass. Just mistaking the run and coming after. Third and 11 now for Santos. Nobody behind him. Gilbert on the wing. Here comes a blitz. And he tried to dump it to his tight end, Awal. And Awal didn't have a chance to get it as Wilcox was coming up on him. Beautiful Santos. Oh, it was. It was beautifully timed. Oh. And look at Denny's goal. Uh, this is just beautiful timing on this stunt by the linebacker. He's going to blitz, and he's just absolutely untouched. He almost intercepted this ball. And he's telling Awal, you should have turned around. You should have had it. Uh, look, you're a quarterback. You don't have any time at all. Goodbye. Ross will have to kick it out of his own end zone. He's gotten away some real rockets tonight. Not this time. A low line drive. O'Brien at midfield. And nothing. San Diego State has had some excellent kick coverage here in the second half. 37-yard punt. A low punt, which may have been returned, but zero. And Jensen on special teams down to make the tackle. Nothing better than uh, good coverage when you have a low liner like that. He's been hitting rockets. That was definitely a bullet right there. 45 seconds uh, left to go, third quarter. Once again, let's check some other scores for you. Florida has come back and leads the Seminoles, 17-13. That's fourth quarter. Texas El Paso over Utah, second period score for you. And Long Beach State extending his lead over to six. Hanson, who's made a big difference, comes into the ball game. Picks up a couple this time. Middle linebacker Richard Brown on the stop. What a difference a week makes. Last week against Utah, they just ran the ball up and down the field. They had three rushers with over 100 yards, and they just have nothing other than Jensen tonight on the ground. And as a team, they ran for 454 yards. Look at this. The last time BYU did not score a touchdown, 10 years ago, against Kansas State. And they're working on it right now. Jensen to throw. Bobbed away for Bellini, and not a good pass covered very well by Mitchell. Bellini is an excellent receiver, but in the last few ball games, he simply hasn't been able to get it to him. He caught 11 passes in his last four games of the season. He's had 44. I think this whole BYU offense is just uh, suffering from an identity crisis. I mean, uh, I just don't think you can so radically change uh, your philosophies without hurting the confidence of your passing game. I mean, I think it's a good move by Lavelle Edwards. He had to go to the running game. That's why they have a chance to get in this title race. This team is confused with their passing routes right now. And he's changed quarterbacks tonight from Lindsay to Jensen. Jensen back to throw blitz, throws the screen, he's holding and overthrows. 
throws it. And coming up from the secondary was Harold Hicks. If he'd have caught it, Hicks would have leveled him for a loss. And San Diego State has just done a brilliant job on this. But you said it earlier. It's like they know it's coming before it happens. And it's true. They just, uh, you know, they, that's twice now they've run a screen. They've been in man-to-man -man coverage. Perfect. Nowhere to go. They're really on top of it defensively right now. Hicks and Water, who have been the strength of that secondary, come off the field and a chance for Pat Thompson again. This is Gilbreth. It's deep to receive. Thompson floats it high. Gilbreth signals fair catch, lets it go, and it takes a fortunate bounce for San Diego State into the end zone. It'll be a touchback after a 45-yard kick. And one of Pat's friends on the West Coast will be back for the fourth quarter in a minute. Good. Good. Starting the fourth quarter with a 7-3 lead, the San Diego State fans are getting a little uh, excited about it. BYU who? Man, look at this. Look at this. I mean, no problem. That guy had peanut bag so easy. Two man. And I have to say, you know, people are shelling out money to watch the peanuts, and I'm doing what ESPN is doing. No problem, ladies and gentlemen. I'll tell you what, he's had about three puns tonight, folks. I wish you'd write more letters. Look at the statistics. San Diego State has been able to do nothing on the ground, and here is Gilmore going back to that attack. I told you earlier, they have averaged less than 100 yards a game on the ground. They're just trying to keep that wicked pass rush honest. Just into the fourth quarter, and Brigham Young trailing 7-3. to three. Pat, do you think there's a chance that uh, San Diego State would get real conservative right now, just trying to sit on that lead? I don't think so. I don't think they can. I think they've got to put another touchdown on the board. Now, right now, they're in a running formation. Oh. And they go to play out. Candace with the fake. And he's got his, he's got his split in Conyers out there with a completion. And he was really drilled to butt him after. I think one problem they've had tonight is they've really uh, shown some strong tendencies when they get in that split, split back uh, formation they've been throwing. In that case, they decided to go stay in their eye and go with the second down play action. I think it really threw BYU off. And here we'll see it right here. His backs are in eye formation. He's going to go with a simple fake right there. Now he's going to throw to Conyers, his fastest receiver. And look at this. Even when they have a nice pass play, quarterback gets drilled. Nice throw right here. I'll break that one tackle we talked about earlier. Now pick, pick up some extra yards for me. Quarterbacks love that. Hey, what? Santa's wears number eight, but he's going to have number 99 superimposed over it. By the time the game's over, Hardy broke a tackle, pushed out of bounds by Jeff Wilcox. Jason Buck and Sean Knight, 99 and 77, have made life miserable for Santa's tonight. Thor Salomo has come on a couple of blitzes together. Hardy now 16 carries, 60 yards. That's been a tough 60 yards for Chris Hardy. How would you like to see Knight? How would you like to see Knight Buck on the same side of the line of defense that they played a four-man front? Four-man line. Be tough. Second and six. San Diego State leading by four. They'd like to go to the pad on that. Santa's throw sideline again. Completes it to Jackson. Good throw that time. Same pattern they ran a moment to go to Conyers. Let's go to Tim Brando. He's got Brian Sight with him. You talk about special quarterbacks. Brian Sight was here in 69, 70, and 71. The glory era. What do you think of Santos, and more importantly, this entire San Diego State program under Denise Cole? Well, first to Santos. I'm very impressed with the kid. I think he's going to be playing a lot longer than just the time he spends here at San Diego State. The program right now is at a pivotal point. This Tonight's game is absolutely big time for them. They can win this game, go to the Holiday Bowl, and Denny stole his first year and prove that they're a force in the WAC conference. There's going to be better and better kids come to town and more and more people in the stands. This is the biggest crowd since your era. You say you drew 45 or They actually outdrew the Chargers here when Don Coriel was uh, at the helm. We did. Coming in, that was coming out of Division II even. We outdrew the Chargers. It was a different program at that time. There was a momentum that they have not experienced around here in a long time. And that's why this game, this season, is so important to reestablish that momentum. Ryan, thanks for stopping by. We're happy to see your health. Thank you, Tim. Nice to see you. Santa's Dumps it over, excuse me, Tim Santos dumps it over the middle of AWOL. There is another flag down. The previous completion had been wiped out by a penalty. So this play started at second and 16. Thanks to, uh, to Tim Brando for talking to Brian Seip. And Seip, boy, can he play. 
you know, this is a motion. Well, he was one of the guys I was happy to see go to the USFL. He broke our heart in Cincinnati when he was with the Browns so yeah. many times. And here's what he did in, uh, in college. He is tied right now with Todd Santos for career touchdown pass. And keep in mind that Santos is a junior. Dennis Shaw, who can also throw that baby, he had 58 here for the Aztecs. And Eric Coriel in the college version was uh, a lot of fun to watch, too. And they did on how to draw the charges. The thing about Corey Hill that uh, I always remember, and I, I felt very fortunate, we played in the AFC Championship game prior to going to the Super Bowl. We had to win that game, and we were fortunate. We faced Eric Corey Hill at 59 below zero weather. That's the only time I've seen him completely stop. Yeah, that'll do it. Third and 13 for San Diego State. Brigham Young showing blitz. They drop out of it. And they go to the draw. And Gilmore broke two down. And got to the 41 yard line. Oh, Good job by Gilmore just to turn a loss. You know, a game of a couple of yards, Richard Cobbs made the stop. They'll still have to punt for what? I think if people saw a list of the players that have played in the WAC Conference, they'd be shocked at the names. They would. Well, Fred Dreyer, who played here, Seif, and Abel Moses, Ivy Curtis, Curtis, who played here. Yeah. And, of course, all the, the, the great players that bring him in. on special teams, a 47-yard kick for return of seven. Timeout for 12, 31 left. Tonight's game is brought to you by Jeep. There's a feeling you can get only in a Jeep. BYU quarterback for sure. Bob Jensen runs very well, but thus far his passes have not been on target really. And that is going to be a lot of work before he's ready to run this offense next year. Or else they're going to have to build a new offense. That's right. I want to thank our spotters, Dale McCann and Ron Schneider, for an excellent job they've done for us tonight up here in the booth. They're going to do only two out of 12 on third down to first. And here they come after Jensen. And it's back to the right hand and complete kick. Got a hand on it. Water has the man covered. Great camera work, guys. 
We've got a timeout in San Diego, 11-16 to go in the ballgame, 7-3, San Diego State. And we'll be back with more from Southern California in a minute. There goes Hamuli into the locker room. He appears to be walking just fine. We don't know what the uh, problem has been. We're told it's a knee and hip pointer, but he doesn't appear to be in too much pain. They may be going in there to put another couple of pads on him. He's got 11 minutes and 16 seconds, and it is a hip pointer, we're told. And those hurt, too. And there's really nothing you can put on a hip pointer. 11-16 to go in the ballgame. San Diego State will start from its own 15. Here comes the blitz. Sanders gets rid of it. Good job by Santa's that time, and Brigham Young was gambling. They have run that pattern now, Pat, three times in about the last two offensive series. Our producer, Terry Linger, called the right and slay Sandlot football. And these quarterbacks are taking the ball and getting away as fast as they can. Here's Conyers, very fast, legitimate, four four sprinter. No way, this defender is so out of position, he's forcing it that he didn't fall down. Key to that play, though, really, Santa's got out of pocket and delivered the ball. Jump away. 360 degrees, Santa's now 13 out of 24, 167 yards. Hardy, <laughs> Jump White came up, made a good stop, solid stop from the floor. Did you see how lowly he looked out there? Jump White had to guard Conyers. There was another yeah. body on the screen. You gotta guard a guy that's that fast, all over the field, putting moves on you. No, thank you. No, it's not a uh, friendly place to be. You have to have a tremendous ego to be a defensive back. You get burned and you shake your head and say, forget it, I'll go get him again next time. No, you have to be, you have to be a very good quarterback to retain your ego. That's right. Second and nine, San Diego State. Clock not yet a factor with 10 and a half minutes, but it will be soon. They have sent different linebackers to make up a four-man rush. They have a front three and eight sacks, as you see for Brigham Young. San Diego State has six. Quarterbacks have spent most of the night either in the huddle or flat on their face. <laughs> Fourteen sacks and about 30 hurries at least. And well, you're right. Uh, they spent a lot of time on that turf. Sanders is working up his way, uh, working his way up, rather, the NCAA career passing list. Getting ready to pass John Reeves if he can get about another 80 yards out of this ball game. Reeves number 20 all time out of the University of Colorado. Oh. Sanders in trouble, throws, almost intercepted. A flag is down. It was right in the hands of Jeff Wilcox, who has six interceptions on the season and should have had seven. See so if we can see this penalty. And it looks it's like it might have been the late hit. No, it's a hole. It's a hole against San Diego State. So 57, Richard Hawks. What do you think? Think that's a penalty? Flag like had already been thrown. Uh, if, if it was or was not, they didn't call it. <laughs> penalty is declined because it's fourth down and 13. So Ross comes back on the field. Gonna have to ice down his entire leg. O'Brien is back to receive, and we are told that Steve Lindsley will come back into the ball game. And I'm really has come out of the locker room. He'll be back. Low line drive kick again, and once again he gets a fourth and a half. And O'Brien tried to pick it up late, almost lost it. Got it back at the 20. A 52-yard kick, and Ross is very lucky. He has either gotten them way up there and killed them or low line drives, and he's got to bounce every time. 9.32 left. We still have a four-point ball game. Live CFA football on ESPN has been brought to you by Michelob Light. Super premium taste in a less filling beer. Who says? You can't have it all. By IBM and the growing family of IBM personal computers. By AT&T International Long Distance Service. AT&T, the right choice. And by the U.S. Armed Forces. It's a great place to start. Go. San Diego State trying to win the Western Athletic Conference. And back in Alex 
John Knight on the bottom of the pile, 77. Along with Jason Buckley out from Trophy Winner 99, they make the tackle after a gain of one. Working on the clock, it's at 6.28. They'd like to get at least the field goal from that man, Kevin Rahill, to give them a seven-point lead and then put it on the back of their defense, which has done a brilliant job all night long. More blitzing tonight than I've ever seen. More use of defensive stops in the front four front three. Excellent defensive strategy. Sand is the throw. Double throw way behind his tight end, looking for AWOL. And it looked like it was almost intended for number nine, Von Collins. And if he hadn't been trailing the play, if he had had his body turned the other way, he had an interception. Sanders has looked real good at times tonight. Other times he has looked not so good. The Aztecs have only three out of 14 on third down conversions, and they face a third and nine here. And if you want to be a little more conservative on this play and not get knocked out of field goal range, or do you go for it? Uh, I think they're going to run it right here. And they will. So Hardy, who's wrapped up by Jason Buck as he got to the 23. I think they want to go for the field goal. They didn't want to take a chance. And not a bad move either. This will leave it up to Ray Hill. His long this year, 42 yards. And this one will be 39. It would give San Diego State a seven-point lead. Down here on the BYU sidelines, Mike and Pat, there are some players that are playing injured. Eddie Mooley is one of them. He had a hit pointer earlier. He also left the field, as you earlier saw, with a left knee. And now the coaches down here are prevailing upon tradition, talking to the players, saying, hey, I don't care if you're hurt. You need one good series if you want to continue as the champions of the WAC Conference, something this school is used to, used to for the last nine seasons. So now they're calling upon the tradition of BYU football and the fact that for years they have represented the WAC. It's down to this. Blood and guts on the BYU sidelines as a couple of them play injured in this, what could be, very, very big series. That's Dwayne Pettit going off. And Tim, that's a very good thing to point out because emotion, pride, tradition. Those are the things that rule college football. 
Here's how that scoring drive went. The result of Ray Hill's field goal. It only went 31 yards, but it came at the right time. Second and 10, Brigham Young. And able to go off the field under his own power. He's had a big night, too, and tackle. Leslie in the shot. Four-man rush. Time, and he guns it over the middle. And Bellini makes the catch at midfield. Bellini drilled by Hicks. One of the few times they've been able to go down to the Pat. Well, I've said it a couple times tonight. It's a vulnerable spot in San Diego State. It's across the middle because they've been doubling a lot outside. Just a simple crossing route. He picks him up. Again, he had time to throw this ball, though. But Hicks will put him down once he catches it. And that is the first catch tonight by a Brigham Young wide receiver. And Lindsley thrilled about it. Brigham Young quarterbacks together. Only 7 out of 20. 53 yards. They really shut him down. 4.52 left in the ballgame. Lindsley again with time. And trying to throw for his tight end, Bellini overthrew that one out of bounds. Who do you think was out of coverage right there? Tell me. Harold Hicks. Always seems to be. I'm you, I'd have to, as an offensive coordinator, I'd have to look at the way he's playing it, particularly the way he played that last crossing route. I've got to go to the post over and put the other receiver. Put somebody across the middle, let him play that ball, pump it, and go on top of the post. Was that something the other coaches upstairs can see and are probably calling down and saying this is what they like? Of course, the things they have to consider, uh, probably the only two times in a row that Lindsley's had any time to throw tonight were the last two plays. Second and ten, the San Diego State fans trying to get the crowd fired up. And Lindsley wants to call a timeout on second and ten and talk it over with Lovell Edwards. Well, you're right, Mike. There's no question as an offensive coordinator, you're crippled if you don't have time to set things up. And then, uh, when your quarterback doesn't have time to set up, you can't set up anything at all. And that's what's happened tonight. But I think right now that uh, San Diego State's gone a little bit more conservatively. You notice they aren't blitzing. They've gone to the nickel package with their four defensive linemen in the ball game and extra defensive back. They're not bringing any backers with those defensive linemen. They haven't had any pressure. We've got four minutes and 43 seconds left to go, and Dwayne Pettit has come back into San Diego State's defensive front four. He's had a good night. The situation with San Diego State is they win tonight, they win the Western Athletic Conference, and they will go to the Holiday Bowl. And the last time they went to a bowl, 17 years ago, to the Pasadena Bowl, Danny Stoltz could win a couple of elections if he pulls this one. He's a good coach. He's won everywhere he's gone. He sure is. And he used the people he inherited, which is really impressive to me. Yes. He turned his program right around in a hurry. Very difficult to do that. He used people that you did not recruit. Second and ten. Lindsley again with time. Then dumped it short and taken a play. over the middle to Hanson coming out of the backfield. They didn't have a receiver deeper than 80 or 90 yards downfield. Well, he was so fucked up yesterday, that's getting spelled to be on the side. We just saw him. I mean, he was, he wanted to play the game, right? If I was the coach, I'd want to suit him up and put him out on the field. Well, what he'd have probably done, everybody else has to get a sack tonight. Third and 10, big, big play here. I'll tell you something else, that's something San Diego State hasn't had the benefit of for a long time. The crowd's loud. Yeah, they're excited. And that helps your defense. More than 45,000 are in the stands. They sold a lot more tickets than that. We must have had a lot of loads on those shows. Maybe the surf was up. I don't have to check them. Oh, you're, you're in California. California. You don't care. You're in the California. It's so hard to say. Come on. What can you do on the track? There's a little bell that works. There's Harold Hicks. We've been talking about him progressively more and more every play. Look at that. He's after a penalty play. Ball hasn't been snapped yet. Look at all the energy he has, though. He'll sleep well tonight, I'll tell you. Third and 15. Lindsley has to do something with this offense, but down by seven and time running out. Deep over the middle, up for grabs. Senior Bowl makes his 
second interception of the season. And there are heroes all around for San Diego State. Well, they tried to go up top. They tried to beat him to the post. The problem is, Lindsay just doesn't have strong enough bar. Just doesn't get it deep enough, and they're just playing. Right now, they're playing protective defense. They're just very deep. You gotta, if you're going to do a play like that, you got to do it on an early down. And they have four guys back there covering Bellini. They weren't going to let him be beaten deep. San Diego State right now wants to keep the ball on the ground. They're working on the clock, 4-12 and counting. Good strategy because they're up 10 to 3. This would be the first time in 10 years that Lavelle Edwards had not won. First time in 11 years that he had not won or shared the Western Athletic Conference title. And Denny Stoltz in his first year already, the conference coach of the year, can take it all with this win. Hardy. And Brigham Young knows they're not going to put the ball up. They're bringing everybody against the run. Now Jensen warming up again. This is the young man who put some spark in the offense, but he did it by running, not by throwing. And by the time they get the ball back, I think they're going to be the pass. But you're talking about Denny Stoltz. I watched him uh, when I was playing with the Bengals. I watched him build that program. Well, once he left Michigan State, went to Bowling Green. He built that program out of nothing. It is, uh, they won the conference last year. He left came here doing the same thing all over again. Sure is. Third and nine. You see the clock. Or you saw it super cool. They'll go with the draw. This is Gilmore. Push down the ball. Gilmore, the Brigham Young 45-yard line. Somehow they fooled them on the draw play when I didn't think they could be fooled. Nice blocking for the line. Corey Gilmore, once he gets this ball, although he is playing fullback, he's not like Roger Vick we watched Thursday night. He wasn't tailback before, they just put him in the fullback and he could run. This guy can run, that's not your typical fullback right there in the open field. But again, it's the versatility, just the versatility of these, of these players down there. They can just play so many different positions and the coaches are utilizing the speed so well. And that was a 29-yard game in his longest of 1986. 2.41 to go, and they've got another series to work on the clock. Party ripped by Sean Knight before he got to the line of scrimmage. This place is going to explode. You can just feel it. They can hold on and win this game. Ten years of frustration. Steve Young's younger brother, Mike, who is one of several quarterbacks on the squad, he is throwing on the sideline. Who knows? You might see him. Two all seven and counting. Second and ten. San Diego State milking the clock for all the And now we've got a timeout. Brigham Young will use its second timeout of the half to stop the clock with 1.55 to go. Well, this is a tough time of ball game for coaches. They earn their salary. Jimmy Stoltz, he was almost smiling there a couple times, but uh, I think he's, he's feeling it right now. He's happy. And really, you know, Lavelle Edwards looked no different last night than he does right now. He knows that he just doesn't have the talent to utilize his coaching abilities. He's probably using 30, 40 percent maximum of the offense that he's designed and used through the years. You know what was really fun to see was at halftime when Don Coriel was out here being honored and seeing him smile. I mean, most people, the, the idea they have of Don Coriel was that grimace he always had on the San Diego Chargers sideline. But off the football field, away from football, he is a very pleasant, gregarious, nice man. Well, every day of the week, except Saturday in college or Sunday in, in the pros, and uh, Isaac Curtis used to tell me that he played for him here at San Diego State. He literally not recognized some of his players that have getting so intense, oh, yeah. so into the game, and that's exactly what everyone, that's what everyone in the country saw every Sunday when he was with the Chargers. Stoltz has the play in on third and nine. yard line, call it the 42, and they'll stop the clock again. Brigham Young will use its last timeout. Could be seeing the end of an era. It certainly would be. Abel Edwards will have his work cut out for him next year. 
But Denny Stoll passed his quarterback coming back, Todd Tannis. A lot of people. Maybe tough for uh, BYU to come back. Could be. And, uh, as we said earlier, Denny Stoll is not just satisfied with winning some ball games here in San Diego State. He wants championships. He wants national prominence. And this is a great step for him if his club can hold on another minute 48. They'll send Ross into punt. O'Brien is deep. And Brigham Young with 10 men on the line of scrimmage. His only job right now is to catch this ball and punt. It doesn't matter if it goes 25 yards. You just got to get rid of it. You just can't have a block punt. That's all he's thinking of. If he gets lucky, gets a nice roll, puts it outside the 10. That's so much better. But just get rid of it. I don't care if you have to take a half step. If he sees that it's going to be blocked, it's a bad snap or something, does he try to kick it or just fall on it? If it's a bad snap, then he's got to just fall on it. But in this, you know, he won't have time to kill his trust. All he's got to do is catch his ball and kick it right now. Ten-man rush, they're ready to go. And Ross gets the job. He got him out of there. Really both it, too. That was about a, a step in one quarter. And that's a nice job. Good job by Ross, a 42-yard kick. I don't think Danny Stoltz cared how far it went, as long as it went. And Brigham Young will have 80 yards to go to tie it up and possibly win this ball game. If they would win tonight, they would keep alive the chance for 11 straight black titles to play against Air Force. And the winner of that ball game would win.
Uh, he's the one that really brought a lot of pride and national uh, attention to this conference. He sure did. He deserves a lot of credit for what he's done for this conference as well as what he's done for his school, which has been absolutely brilliant. A courageous performance by the San Diego State football team, especially the defense, which turned into one brilliant play after another. Our final score, 10-3, and we'll be back to talk about this ball game in San Diego in just a moment.